So let's look at homework number four from last week. And we have a question one, which is asking for Lewis structures of these two molecules. And then from those Lewis structures, work out whether there's any polar covalent bonds, any dipole bonds, as are sometimes known, and whether these dipoles have momentum in one direction of the molecule. Is there a dipole moment across the entire molecule? If there's a dipole moment, it means that most of the electron density is shifted to one side of the molecule, making one side of the molecule electron enriched and one side electron deficient. So let's have a look. For the first structure, the COH2, we count up the number of valence electrons, four for carbon, six for the oxygen, and one for each of the hydrogens. It gives us a total of 12 electrons. We choose carbon as the central atom. We'll draw the initial atoms round about and start filling the octets of the outer atoms first by drawing lone pairs of electrons but we run out of electrons before we get to the carbon. So we have to use one of the lone pairs which was originally put on the oxygen, use it as a carbon to oxygen double bond to complete the octet. Meanwhile for the SiO2, the silicon dioxide, we get four electrons for the silicon, six electrons for each of the oxygens, so it gives us a total of 16 electrons. We choose silicon as the central atom because it needs four electrons to complete its shell compared to just two electrons for each of the oxygens. We draw in the lone pairs initially for the oxygens to complete their octets, then use a pair of electrons from each of the oxygens to form double bonds so that the octet of the silicon atom is complete. So for these final Lewis structures, we can see that the first molecule is trigonal planar. With a bond angle of 120 degrees each time. But when we compare differences in electronegativities, the only dipoles or the only polar covalent bond is the oxygen to carbon bond. The dipole points towards the more electronegative atom, which is the oxygen, and this end of the bond is electron enriched with a negative dipole. The carbon end of the bond is the electron deficient end of the bond, and so we draw it with a positive dipole. So we're saying that most of the electron density in this bond is moving towards the oxygen, which already has lone pairs of electrons as well. So most of the electron density in this molecule is tied up on this top side of the molecule. And there's very little electron density associated with the bottom half of the molecule. So with the dipole, the polar covalent bonds, all pointing in one direction, it gives a dipole moment to the entire molecule. So there is a dipole moment for this first structure. With our second molecule, there's a polar covalent bond from the silicon towards the oxygen. The oxygen electron enriched and the silicon electron deficient. There's a similar and equal dipole in the opposite direction. So again, electron deficient around the silicon and electron enriched around the oxygen. But these two dipoles are equal and pulling in opposite directions. So they have the effect of cancelling each other out. So our second structure has no dipole moment. Turning over to the second page.
we want to balance our three equations. Three carbons on the left, so we need three times the carbon on the right. So we use three molecules of carbon dioxide. For the hydrogen, four hydrogens on the left, we want to have four hydrogens on the right. But there's only two in each molecule. So we use two molecules of water to give us our four required hydrogens. So balancing the oxygen, two times three, six oxygens in carbon dioxide, two times one, two in water. So six plus two gives eight. So the total oxygen on the left must also be eight. Two in each molecule, four molecules gives us the eight in our final balanced equation. Second one, we have got an ionic reaction which has chromium ions, nitrate ions, NO3, but there's three of them in the molecule, potassium ions, and sulfate, SO4, ions. We've got one chromium on the left initially, and two on the right, so we need two molecules of chromium nitrate to balance the chromium. If we balance the nitrate next, three ions of nitrate in one molecule, Remember the nitrate retains its formula because when we draw the Lewis structure only through the Lewis structure do we see that these atoms need to share electrons to complete octets. So this nitrate never breaks down because it would break octets. So three nitrates in each molecule, two molecules would give us six. One nitrate in each molecule six molecules gives us six of these nitrate ions. Remember the coefficient in front tells us how many of these units we have. To balance the potassium, there's two on the left initially, but now we've got six on the right. One in each molecule of potassium nitrate, six molecules to give six potassiums. So we need three potassium sulfate molecules to give us a six and one sulfate in each molecule, three molecules, matches with the three sulfates we see on the right hand side. Last one, we are trying to balance nitrogen, hydrogen and oxygen in this equation. As we look at it initially, there's one nitrogen on the left, two nitrogens on the right, so we need to double up the nitrogen on the left. So initially that gives us two molecules. We want to balance the hydrogen. If there's initially two molecules, two times three is six. And we want the hydrogen on the right to be equal. So initially, we use three molecules of water to give us a six. Now we want to balance the oxygen. If there's only three molecules of water on the right, that gives us three oxygen. That would need 1.5 molecules of oxygen on the left. So to get our final answer as we see it now, we actually multiplied the initial equation through by 2. So final proportions are 4 to 3 to 2 to 6. And it gives us the lowest whole numbered ratio for our equation.